Hello, I'm Matthew Weinstock, Managing Editor of Modern Healthcare. Thanks for tuning into the latest edition of The Checkup. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit last year, health systems across the country were forced to rethink their plans for deploying new technology systems, especially electronic health record systems, which take months and months of planning. Some deployments were put on hold, yet others like Valley Children's Healthcare in California's Central Valley opted to quickly shift gears and do a virtual go live with their system. And I'm pleased today to be joined by Kevin Shimamoto. He's CIO at Valley Children's. We're gonna talk about that virtual go live with their Epic EHR and really what the future might look like for IT deployments now that they've done these virtual systems go, going live virtually. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So let's talk before you got into the virtual go live mm -hmm. of, of last spring. Um, just walk us through sort of before the pandemic hit where you are, where you were, excuse me, just with your epic um, planning in, in terms of going live with that new HR system. Yeah, um, this, this whole um, project started uh, in 2017, 2018, going through just we had 70 MRs. And uh, the decision was through the medical executives uh, were saying, we need to be better um, prepared for the EHR movement. So one of the things that we looked at is, what is our best way to take 70 of Mars down to one? And the biggest issue that we had is, which one we're we gonna choose? Obviously there we, we were in a Meditech space at the time, um, but pediatrics is something that uh, that is, you know, singularly one of the things that we wanted to focus on. and. Uh, Epic had uh, a, the probably majority of the installs across America uh, in the pediatric group. Um, so we had done a just a, a long term what I call RFP. We did a lot of visit um, in many hospitals, but at the end of the day, it came down to Epic as a choice. Uh, and so as we went through the process and the negotiations, everything, we came up with a April twenty fifth. 2020 uh, go live uh, and it's tr traditional go live we're, we're staying on what they call the foundation system for our pediatric facility and so we went through the process of what epics you know actual project plan was uh, how we deploy epic uh, in uh, in the pediatric facility so we had a team uh, and really had a lot of teams to put that together in order to come up with a plan, uh, just a normal plan to come live, you know, Epic on the ground here at our facility, as well as the consultants uh, that we needed to bring in during the, the go live period. Okay. And, and so, you know, as you're thinking about this, April mm -hmm. 2020, obviously there are months, years even of planning this process. Mm -hmm. you, you, right. We get into 2020, the pandemic, hit, pandemic right. hits in March. Right. Walk us through then what the thought process was at a leadership level of, boy, do we stop and wait, or you you eventually yeah. decide to go virtual? Yeah. How did that process play out? Yeah. Great, great question. Well, as you well know, January hit, and you know through what's happening, we had heard about the COVID uh, coming from the, you know, actually I heard first in in China that they were, and then we heard up in Seattle, up the Washington area, that our first. Um, COVID patient was tested positive and, you know, didn't think much about it. And then all of a sudden, if we go fast forward a little ways into March, we're going, oh my goodness, this is big. It's a pandemic. Um, everything pretty much shut down across not only the world, but definitely at Valley Children's as far as things that we could and could do. Um, and so we came up with a plan, the senior executives met and we decided, okay, what's the pros and cons of doing it now? Well, the pros is that we had the undivided attention of Epic because most of their implementations were shut down. So we had large, dis long, long discussions with Epic and saying, okay, have you done this before? And the answer was, well, sort of, you know, and one of the international go lives that they've done, they've done it, they did it in a, in a remote topic type environment. Um, so the second thing that was decided is, okay, if we don't do it, what is this going to do? All the work and planning that we've done, we're almost into the go live time frame. If we were to stop this and put it on home for uh, uh, until the end of the last year, uh, what, what would be the impact? Well, the impact was big because here you have a whole team ready almost to go live. And if we didn't do it, then we had to put everything on hold and basically restart it from a economic, from a financial, things like that. And, and we still have the seven EMRs are trying to take care of. Uh, so decision was made, What? how can we do it? And that's where it came down to us. How can we get this done? And I think through 
Uh, we had a lot of communications. We had a lot of planning and coordination to make sure that does this make sense? And we got a thumbs up. And, and as you say, you know, Epic had some experience internationally. I'm sure the consultants you brought in mm -hmm. had some experience, but mm -hmm. how nervous were you about doing a virtual go live of this magnitude? Yeah, well, the main thing is your foundational things you're going to need. One is how can we take care of the end users remotely, you know, through either, you know, so what we came up with a plan with our consulting firms as well as Epic is to do a few things. We had on the ground uh, a command center employed by our team members. So no outside consultants could even come into our facility at the time. And that was part, part of trying to keep the patient safe. The second thing we, we decided is, okay, how do we take care of our end users during a go live? Well, we opened up four different locations, meaning when I say locations, but locations within the hospital. So we had our video conferencing systems up seven by 24. We had put our phone systems and integrated that with our consulting as well as Epic so that we could, they could take over and then a video as well as taking over their systems. So, I mean, so you've got a PC, an issue, we can, those end users or those consultants or uh, people that were away from that, they can actually take over those uh, PCs during the issues that they had with either a clinician or uh, a physician, um, depending on what the problem was. And then we had an intake center of all the tickets coming in, and then we would put them out to the various proper locations, super users, users, whoever were deemed for that, um, scheduled to be on, on online, um, worked wonderfully. Um, having Epic 7x24, open channel, even though maybe a lot of times no one was at the, uh, our, our, you know, our different sites, but we definitely all, we always had uh, definite times that we had uh, determined what is the best uh, times to have our meetings. And so that mm -hmm. all worked out well. So, but, so basically bottom line is getting us coordinated was the big thing. Having the technology to be able to, you know, not only see and but also to coordinate. So if we had major issues, that we can have an uh, actual a virtual uh, um, room for people to gather and, and talk about the issues, and we got through that all virtually. And like I said, having a, the ability to have a WebEx and having the ability to have the tools necessary to take it, it was determined that the risk would be a lot lower. We have the right people, right time, right place to make sure that everything was taken care of in in the very short period of time. As you know, go lives are very strenuous. Um, there's right. a lot of things that we had, so we were had a big command center that we were going to have. You know, have people, probably hundred people within that command center, to be able to do the net normal things, but we weren't. So we virtualized our command center, if you will. As you think about virtualizing the command center, even staff training of the clinicians, mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, we heard so much about Zoom fatigue last year, right? And even mm -hmm. this year, did that play into it at all of just, you know, people tired of having to do everything remotely? Was that a consideration? You know, um, at first, the adrenaline was really going, you know what I mean? So the adrenaline, because the adrenaline was going, that was the biggest thing that kept us going. Um, into about a week, uh, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, we started to kind of see some fatigue going on. And, all, you know, we did everything we could possibly could for the team to make sure that they stood, they, they stayed as, as well as they personally can. And uh, so we had... You know, like I said, our team had our command center here, but the other side of things where the consulting groups as well as Epic, they, you know, obviously we went through it, but they had enough people and team members to be able to fill those scheduled areas. And we got new fresh looks, we got new fresh people, they got some rest and, and it definitely uh, didn't seem at that point uh, to be a big issue. Got it. Okay. So you're a year out from... Mm -hmm that go live, right? you know, if you had to grade sort of how that effort went compared to a regular go live, I'm sure, you, I know you've done a lot of yeah. other go lives. How do you compare yeah. it? You know, one of the things that, you know, some things I, I thought were relatively even better because you had, even though you're in a virtual environment, we had some runners to actually go to the big cases where there are the big issues, but basically you had a physician to physician 
who was able to talk to the physician right at their PC. They didn't have to move. They didn't have to wait. It, they were right there taking over that particular physician's PC. And I heard, you know, through the ORs, which is a tough one uh, to, to, to communicate with, they were really pleased of well, how well the communications went. And so that part to me was better in, in cases because a lot of times you just can't get into an OR. You know, you have to gown up, you got to, you know, make sure that you're, you're sterile, make sure that you have a pro proper, but man, having a physician to physician talk and like we're doing right now, it, 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 it really worked well. Yeah. And so if you, again, if you sort of think back over that rollout, were there things you would have done differently or are there things that you learned as you go into more right. deployments that you'll do differently because of this process? I, I think you can't uh, test enough before, meaning do testing, meaning whether it's your, com your computers, your printers, but we did a pretty good job of that. I think um, not knowing what you didn't know is, you know, the connectivity side sometimes wasn't really good, but that's, it's going to happen. So you, you should have a, a backup plan. So if Epic went down or one of your consulting groups went down, well, we're in this case, knock on wood, we, that didn't, that wasn't an issue. Um, probably a little more timing uh, as far as planning, planning for uh, a go live that is handled, you know, utilize, you know, how we did it. It was very, um, was, we had to throw it together very quickly. And, and what I can say is, uh, the leadership at both our organization as well as Epic, they they really opened their arms up and said, "Hey, we can do it. Let us know what we need to do to make it happen." And uh, you know, if I look at a year now, um, if there's anything I would be doing different, it's just a little more timing on, you know, knowing what the a pandemic really is, uh, mm -hmm. knowing the the cause and effect of it. You know, we're we're feeling the fatigue right now. I mean, you know, sure. as you go through post the year, we're still you know coordinating. Uh, a lot of the things to try to get uh, to a stable, optimized environment. When you take it from seven EMRs to one, obviously you've got all the ins and outs of things. And we're still work. We're still in this pandemic yet, even though you know we see a lot of you know I, I think lights that are going on that people are starting to be able to move around, be a little bit more um, you know back to what they call the norm a little uh, as we get through the vaccine side of things. So, but we still are seeing the fatigue, and I don't think it's just us being live with Epic, but I think across America, we're all seeing this fatigue going on. And um, it, it's difficult, like it's what we're doing right now, just being on a screen seven, eight hours a day. Uh, it, it's been a, a huge um, change in, in taking, you know, seven to 900 people from their normal jobs to their homes. And, and But it did, had opened up a lot of things for us to say we could do things a lot more uh, having, you know, some of our employees work from home. And uh, it's worked out in my case pretty well. Pretty well. Yeah. Well, you, you bring up fatigue and, and obviously a, a deployment like this is taxing mm -hmm. on everybody involved. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. obviously the pandemic itself has been taxing on so many yes. people in, in healthcare. Yes. So um, how did you have to balance that aspect of it? The fatigue of a deployment and the fatigue of just staff being there 24 hours a day dealing with, you know, a crisis. Yeah. Great question. Um, I've got to say, the team that I have here are resilient. Um, they buy into the Valley Children's, uh, the way we do things here. It's it's an enormous place. Uh, it, it, if you could come here and do an in interview here at our facility in a normal time, uh, it is amazing. Um, everything is centered around the kids. It, it really is. The patients are our kids. And having that mindset of going through anything, whether it's implementation, upgrades, uh, anything you're trying to do, how can we make it better for our kids? And, and that is something that comes from the board down to the, the actual employees who, who try to make things happen here. And if you have that mindset, it's, it's, it's really, they go above and beyond because, you know, at the end product, if we can put tools out there for the clinicians and the physicians, uh, medical staff, the better we can be for that patient. And that's what we really focus on. We really focus on patient care and safety and quality, things like that. Right, right. And so lastly, Kevin, I wanna ask, uh -huh. you've been through it. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think this means for deployments of, of any system in the future? Do you, do you imagine that 
more deployments will be virtual at this point and you won't need to have yeah. consultants and others coming into your facilities once we get past the pandemic. Right. right. You know, it really has opened an opportunity, you know, for a lot of our uh, organizations across America. Uh, I believe, yes, to, I, I would do this again. Um, one, you save a lot of travel costs. You can say, you know, have people here locally. Um, you have the ability now with the WebExes of the world, if you will, virtual um, meetings and things like that. People are getting used to it now. We, we weren't used to it a year ago. Um, having the tools that you can share, share screens and being comfortable being in front of a camera is something that is, you got to learn that. It's not something easy for everybody. Um, uh, I would definitely think, you know, and as we hear across America, we op kind of opened up the avenue for epic implementations and had a lot of calls uh, regarding this. And uh, I would definitely think this is a, a way of the future, you know, controlling costs, uh, still having a great implementation, but the way that we put the programs together may be a little bit different, but at the same time, we are here for purpose and that is to get that job done at this right time and then when we didn't miss that date we stayed on that date you know for two years and um if i can conclude with what we says i would do it again in a heartbeat if we you know what i know now like you said there's a few things that we change but to roll it out you know talked to a lot of cios my friends uh, across america and and uh, they said you you pulled off something that was you know not normally most people or organizations would do in a pandemic and that that is something that i'm very proud to say that it can be done and i think well, hopefully it opened up the ways for other um you know organizations to at least take a look at that and uh, obviously from a cost savings point of view not having people in hotels and traveling and things like that so definitely i think this may be a new norm uh, if yeah you will. yeah well, Kevin, we appreciate you sharing your insights yeah, you. and your experience of rolling out the virtual go live. And, you know, who knows when the pandemic's over, maybe we will take you yeah. up on that offer and come out and, and tour Absolutely. Valley Children's. We'd love to have you. Great. Well, thank you for your time and uh, stay you. safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm Matthew Weinstock with Modern Healthcare. Be sure to come back next Monday for another edition of The Checkup.